Welcome to Casco United Methodist Church, and happy Easter. Easter continues for many Sundays until we reach Pentecost. So happy Easter to all of you, and welcome back. It is wonderful to see all of you here this morning. On this first Sunday of April, we will be celebrating communion, and I wanted to let all our visitors know that we believe in an open table. All are welcome to participate in communion. You do not need to be a member of this church or, or a member of any church to receive communion in this space. Um, a few announcements in the life of the church. Tomorrow is your monthly food pantry. Uh, so tr some of you are truck drivers and you'll hear, be here around 11 to pick up the food. Others of you are volunteers and you'll be here around 12 to help unpack and we thank you for making that ministry happen. If you would like to volunteer with that, you can see Earl. He's um, in the AV balcony and he will be down here after worship and anyone can point out Earl to you if you would like to find him. Uh, other announcements in the life of the church, if you did donate a lily for Easter last week and you wanna take it home, feel free to take it home after worship. Another event happening this month, the last two Sundays of this month, we are gathering those of you who may have attended for a long time. You might have been attending for seven or eight years, or you might have just been attending for the last few months. And we want you to get to know each other if you're newer to this community. So we will gather after worship on the third and fourth Sunday of April and share our faith stories and share what brought us here. And I'll also share with you the different things about this church. And then you'll be invited to become new members on the first Sunday of May. So if that is of interest to you, please let me know um, so I can anticipate how many people will be joining us. So if you haven't joined the church, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, please take a deep breath with me. Take another deep breath to the soles of your feet. And I'll say a short prayer before we do the call to worship. God, we are right here, right now, wanting to experience you as tangibly as we eat the bread and drink the juice today. As tangibly as the story unfolds today, scripture, we want to experience your presence of love. So we give to you all that has happened right before this and all that will happen after this so we can be right here, right now, in your presence. Amen. Please stand for the call to worship. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Uh, would you join me within the responsive call to worship? Jesus said, Follow me. Jesus said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus said, Forgive seventy times seven. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. In response, we say, Here's, Here's my, my heart. heart. Take and seal it, 
seal it for thy courts above. Let us worship God with all our hearts. For the opening prayer. God of second chances and God of new life, we have spent our days wandering. Peter, we have milled about through nearly every faith. We have had courageous days and convicted days, learning days and questions. We have had days for diving out of the boat, days for deep joy, and days where the pain of the world was close to bear. A story of grace to give us pause and pull us in. Our scripture reading is from John 21, verses 1 through 13. After these things, Jesus showed again to the disciples of the sea of, by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. And they said to him, We'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat. That night they caught nothing. So, excuse me. Just after daybreak, Jesus, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in. Oh, many. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. He put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. 
When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there. And Jesus said, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. And Peter went aboard, held the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. There were so many that it was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come Now none of the disciples dared to ask him who are you, because they knew it was Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same. Now the third time that Jesus had appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished bread, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said, My lambs. Son of John, do you love me? He said, Yes, Lord, that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Said to him a third time, of John. And Peter felt hurt because him the third. Do you love me? You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. We I say, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Death by which he would glorify God. And after he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, who is it that's going to betray? When Peter saw him, I see them all about. So many young leaders, if you would like to come and bring your leadership skills up here, you are. We are on the Sea of Galilee, or it looks like a lake, and I imagine that it's stable on a boat. And we have been out all night fishing. But do we have any? People didn't feel like they had quite enough fish. And they had been up all night. And they hear a voice from the shore. And they, Jesus actually says, children. All of us on the other side of the boat. So where would you like to cast to the net? On this side? Okay. All right, now, look away over there for a second. Okay, turn back. What do you see? Fish, fish. Who can get the fish for me? Share the fish. Share the fish with others. Give the fish to others if who don't have fish, okay? I want more fish? There's more fish. Okay, hold. Hold the fish. Okay. So, so what happens after they fit? One of the disciples said the person who told us to put our nets in was the Lord. And Peter, okay, let's volunteer to be Peter today. All right, Peter and Connor, you want to be Peter? All right, you're going to jump in the lake. You want to go pretend you're jumping in the lake? I'll jump in with you. And we're going to go in that voice. Okay? Looking for to find the boat. All right, that was a long swim, wasn't it? Let's swim back in front so people can see us. All right, we're swimming. We're swimming. Jesus. And then Jesus, who is considered, wants to eat fish with us. Can you sit down with me? All right. So have you Yes, I have too. What happens when kings or queens eat in cartoons? What is, is there a big banquet and a lot of people 
serving? That's what I've seen. No. But no, you, what do you see? Okay, so when Jesus eat with people, Jesus, who is considered a king, actually serves his friends. So who can pass me what we're going to eat? We're going to eat the fish. All right, let's put it on the charcoal. Let's put all the fish on the charcoal. All right. You got the fish for the charcoal? This is what the disciples are doing with Jesus and Peter. Okay, so Jesus is talking a lot to Peter because they haven't seen each other in a while. And the last time they saw each other, it was hard. So, anyway, Jesus says to all of us, Peter, do you love me? Says, Peter, do you love me? He says back. What does he say back? Yes. He says, yes, I love you. In these fish, help me find three words. There's one word. Words. We're looking for the third word. Okay, beloved, they're all. Okay. Three words. Peter says to G- Jesus, Peter. Peter says, Yes, I love you. And then Jesus says back, he says, Read out, read this word. The second word, my. And what's the third word? Sheep, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. Now, my gosh, talking in a lot of metaphors, isn't he? Feed my sheep. What do you think sheep means? Do you think it means really sheep, like ba ba ba? Feed my sheep. What do you think it means, Dakota? I think you know. You want to take a guess? Feed my sheep. Audience, like a game. Who in the audience can help us? Feed my sheep. What does it mean? Yeah, and what are we doing? eating fish, right? So Jesus is talking about abundance and grace and how people, all of us are to feed each other and take care of each other. That was a big story, wasn't it? What happened? Well, thank you for playing with me. Thank you for playing out the story. You want to have a short prayer with me? All right. God of grace, we thank you so very much. You feed us. Fish and bread, and you remind us that you owe us and you invite us to feed. Amen. Oh my gosh, you guys did so much today. That was a big story. Oh, on this same last amazing Eve who sings in the choir will take children to Sunday school. Okay dive deeper into feeding their sheep. Thank you.
Patricia, and thank you, choir, and thank you for the organ last week, all that you pour into it, and all that everyone pours into our music. Say a word of prayer with me before I begin. Oh my goodness, God, an amazing scripture. It is layered and meaning, and on this morning, we come alive as we reread it, and we see and hear new things hearts. We may imagine ourselves in the boat with Jesus. Amen. One of the things that roots me when I feel like things are falling apart is to get outside. One of my favorite places to pray and reset is on the dirt road right next to my parents' farm. And Simon Peter, after the trauma and the drama, the surprise and the confusion, and and he goes fishing to try to reset himself. And I imagine every life, he left fishing to go follow Jesus, and they were supported by some women and some people who helped them do their ministry. And now Jesus is not around, and he needs to make a living too, and he goes back to fishing. They are fishing. In John 21, it is after the resurrection, but this story is very familiar to us because in John 21, the first story we read in Lent from Luke 11, In Luke 11, we're looking back from John 21, and we have kind of a full circle moment because both in Luke 11 and today, Peter and the other disciples are fishing all night, and they have caught John scholar Dr. Carolyn Lewis points out that the script is packed in John 21 with references 
not only to Holy Week, but to previous verses in the Gospel of John. This morning scripture with Jesus, the light of the world shows up when? But it calls his disciples children just as he did on Monday, Thursday. And the scripture before us reminds us of the very beginning of John. In John 1, when Jesus is called and talked about from the fullness we have all received, grace, grace, grace upon grace, fish upon fish, abundance upon abundance. Yet Peter was not made after Jesus had died that and he had run to the tomb and not found the body, that the voice he heard from shore was actually Jesus' voice. And Peter had not seen Jesus. He was in the empty tomb last week. Peter hadn't seen Jesus since Jesus' arrest in the garden. In last week's Easter narrative, they do speak. And on Monday, Thursday, before Easter Sunday, the time where Jesus said with the disciples, and he gives them a command, a new commandment, to love one another just as I have loved you. Just as I have loved you? We sometimes have to love as Jesus loved, which is not an easy task. When seeing Peter and the disciples, the first thing Jesus does is Jesus serves them. He makes breakfast for them. Now, you would think if it was Jesus, they'd all want to make breakfast for Jesus. He's in telling what he was teaching on Monday, Thursday. On Monday, Thursday, he washed them. He washed them. And when Peter was uncomfortable with that, Jesus said, you have to receive it. You need to receive it because he had this beautiful, Beautiful, beautiful passage on Monday, Thursday, in John 13, where he says, For I have set an example to do as I have done to you. Slaves and nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. He's trying to level the playing field here. I am not the king. I am serving you, and it is all our to serve one another. Let's not put each other on pedestals. And to love as I love, it is active. It is beyond our imaginations. Jesus is feeding Peter this morning. Jesus is feeding us this morning. And at this, charcoal fire. It mirrors the charcoal fire that Peter stood in front of a few days before. On the night of Monday, Thursday, Peter stood in front of a charcoal fire to warm his hands. And it was just after Jesus had fasted and Peter had followed Jesus being tried. And Jesus asked. So you have disciples. So you have teachings. And as Jesus was being asked, Peter was warming his hands outside. Someone comes up, are you a disciple of Jesus? Is it you that follow this man? And Peter denies. He says, I am not. And that is also an amazing moment in John the gospel where Peter is saying John is Jesus saying I am I am the living I am the good shepherd 
And Peter, in his denial, is saying, I am not. Not a disciple. I am not. And he says it three times. And on this amazing scene today in today's scripture where we are having the first time that Jesus is seeing and Peter drew out a sword wanting to defend Jesus and he cut off the ear of an enslaved person of a high priest and Jesus say put away your sword and then he denies he knows Jesus he hasn't seen him yet because guess what is not at the crucifixion. He is not showing up. The women stay, but Peter and the disciples are not there. So in Jesus' darkest hour, this person who said, lay down his life, just doesn't show up. But Jesus goes and finds him after the resurrection because it is important that he lives out what he taught on Monday, Thursday. And the love. And then Peter and him interact for the first time since they saw each other on Thursday. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Notice. Say, hey Peter, you denied me. Hey Peter, you didn't show up for me. Jesus, do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter responds. Yes, Lord, I love you. And then Jesus responds in three different phrases. First he says, something like, tend my sheep, memorized. But the first one he says, ten, ten, okay, feed my lamb, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, Wow. That's what Jesus is inviting Peter to do. People. Because Jesus has been known. Jesus is to ascend soon, and he won't be there. So who does he have to figure it out? Nope. He's, door. He's knocking at the person who we have seen We have seen as flawed, and he's knocking on that person's door and saying, okay, I am going to ascend. You will not see me soon. Will you feel as imperfect as you feel? Will you tend my sheep? Perfect as you feel. Because I love you, and the way he loves is different than the way Peter has loved. So in the Greek, there are, two for, there are for many forms of love in Greek. A form of love called love, which means I love unconditionally. I love sacrificially. I love abundantly. That is agape love. That is the kind of love Jesus practices. And then there is the love And it is a brotherly love. It means I might love you unconditionally. I might not love you sacrificially. I might not love you divinely. But I love you with brotherly love. And that is the kind of love Peter is offering. So when Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? He's using the word, Peter, do you agape love me? And G and response is, I love you in a brotherly kind of love. And Jesus asks again, do you agape love me? Do you agape love me unconditionally? And Jesus responds again. And Peter responds again, I brotherly love you. So how does this discussion about how we love differently. Jesus is inviting an agape love and 
Peter is offering a brotherly love. They are two of love. Now, um, I've been wondering this week as I read this, asking Peter and asking all of us to love in this unconditional, sacrificial love. I'm not used to that. It makes us uncomfortable, makes us not sure. As Peter, by keeping responding back, might be unsure of that unconditional love. And this story invites us to a kind of disciple, a kind of love that can only be fueled by a root. I paused on morning when one of you on to social media an interview with Pastor Marsha Tucker. Raise your hand if you know Pastor Marsha, yeah? She serves at Ganges United Methodist Church, and she was on Wood TV 8 in an interview that I watched on Friday morning. It aired on Thursday night on Channel 8. And I couldn't help think as I listened to this interview that Marsha, Pastor Marsha, as all of us know her, she was telling a story of the type of love and divine. And I'm going to read from Marsha's interview with Channel 8. This story and what Marsha's talking about happened on Palm Sunday weekend. So on the Saturday Sunday, Channel 8 shared that someone had left the door open accidentally at the church in Ganges. And a church called Pastor Marsha to say that they had discovered inside the church a stranger. The stranger was upset when he met with Marsha, but he did The stranger was well-dressed in a Carhartt jacket, hat, scarf, the member on the phone to Marsha said, I have a young man here who would like to talk to a pastor. Pastor Marsha Tucker drove over and spent time in the church library listening to the visitor. Marsha said to Channel 8, he was having a really bad time. He'd lost his job, he'd been in a fight, been kicked out of where he lived, so he was basically kind of homeless. He never told me exactly what was bothering him, but I knew he was very upset. He got emotional while we were talking, crying to the point where I gave him a Kleenex. He told Marsha in Grand Rapids, but they wouldn't have him. He said, I've disappointed them so much they aren't going to take me. And Marsha replied, no, I don't believe that. with him and then she could tell he was done talking but she never knew what the problem was she tried calling so they let him sleep in the annex next door to the church pastor marsha should i call the police i don't know she thought about it prayed about it and she told her congregation, God didn't tell me to call the police. He told me to just let it be, Marsha. The next morning, they found him sleeping on the annex floor, and he accepted an invitation to 10 a.m. worship. It was Palm Sunday. So people were coming in and passing out palms, and they gave one to their newest guest, a person named Brian, who sat near the back. We treated him as a visitor at our church, the way God would want us to do. He did. Sat in the back, and right in front of him was a woman wearing with words on the back. And on the back of the woman's sweatshirt said, You're worthwhile. God loves you. Somebody loves you. Some sermon, Pastor Marsha realized he wasn't sitting there. Moments later, Two men 
from the church left the sanctuary. And Pastor Mike said, what is going on? Just before the at the end of the service, one of the church members interrupted to make an announcement. He says, I want you people to know that you cannot leave the church. You need to go on for coffee, and you need to stay there for a while. And when you go past the doors, you see a lot of police cars. A man that was taken into custody, and he did have a gun. The pastor later learned the bathroom to turn himself in to police. And as he walked out of the front door of Ganges United Methodist Church, he tossed his gun onto the front yard. And the police arrived. Pastor Marsha and the congregation discovered that the day before he arrived at the church, he had shot Ruby Garcia, someone he says was his girlfriend in Grand Rapids. Pastor Marsha said, I think God was working with him from whenever it happened on Friday, all through Friday, through Saturday, sitting here talking to me, staying here, being in the church service. The pastor said, I think God was talking to him because I knew he had a faith. I could tell I under- he understood and he understood. I loved him, Marsha Tucker said. I was so moved by this. I was so moved by this because this is a miracle. I was moved by this because Marsha knew to be so rooted in prayer that she led God lead her and the whole congregation who was or what had happened they treated him like any person with grace and dignity and love. And I don't know all that went on, but for him to call 911 from the bathroom stall and turn himself that is a miracle and the hand of God. And Pastor Marsha was practicing an unconditional, sacrificial kind of Jesus that can sometimes make us miracle. At the same time, it can create miracles. So we're invited to this charcoal fire. But it has so many things. It is not just a charcoal fire. It is an invitation for us all to be the good shepherd now. And it doesn't mean that we'll know how it all turns out. It doesn't know that we'll know anything. But it invites us to love so abundantly that we ourselves will be changed, but so will the whole world. Amen.
You may be seated. Today is the last Sunday in a series, so you all know that I've been preaching on Peter since the first Sunday of Lent, and today ends that series. And a part of the series, they gave us this beautiful communion liturgy, the story that the last few weeks. So I'm going to a particular communion liturgy this morning because it has been written for those who have been on this journey with Peter. But it means that I'm going to do communion today. And a little different. So how many prayers of the people today is at this point, prayers of the people, what I'm calling part one, is we will say our prayers and concerns. So if you have a prayer concern, so if you have a joy or something you are holding on your heart, we will pray for And prayers of the people will be a part of the liturgy that's in your bulletin for communion as well as the Lord's Prayer. So it will be a little different today, but we're okay. So I'm going to share first a few me, and then I'll open it up to what you would like to pray for. And if you are praying with us on YouTube at home, or if you'd like to share in this community, as you share your prayer request, you are praying it. And I will say back your prayer so that those of us who are worshiping on YouTube can hear it. A few um, prayer requests that have been shared with me or that I wanted to bring up. Um, I wanted to pray this morning for Selena. We know Selena Warren Kuhn. Is that how you say her last name? Um, she's, uh, we know that we have seen her so beautifully pregnant And um, this week, she's scheduled to be induced. So I asked her permission if we could pray for her as she has that scheduled this week. So let us give a short prayer for Selena. Selena, we so love you, and we celebrate your body. And as your um, date, doctors and the nurses, that will surround you and Josh with care. We pray for the process. We pray that you feel God's presence of peace pouring into you and you feel God's presence of strength giving you strength. And we pray for this beautiful baby that you are holding and have been growing with God. And we pray that it has the courage that it, feels, that it feels like it knows that it will be so loved every moment of its life. The whole process surrounding Selena this week and Josh and hers, baby. Amen. I also want to continue prayers for Tim Teske. He's still at Mary Friedbed in Grand Rapids. Um, he's been there for a long time. And he is continuing to heal as he has two broken legs. Um, So we pray for his healing and all of those who are giving him physical therapy and as he he learns to walk. So, Tim, we pray for your continued strength and we pray for your continued peace. And we pray for your healing and your patience. And please know that all of us love and support you. Amen. Amen. I also have two other short prayers. I want it, um, I'm just going to open it so I don't forget. So I want to pray for the family of Ruby Garcia. Ruby Garcia lost her life um, uh, the Friday before Palm Sunday. And we pray for Ruby Garcia's family, who's navigating deep grief and deep, deep, deep grief over the unexpected loss of their daughter. May this family be comforted during this time of deep lament and deep sorrow. May they feel supported. May they feel seen and heard. And also for the family of Brandon... His last name is Vite, who was the visitor and met Pastor 
Marsha a few weeks ago at the church and who is now in jail and has admitted to the murder. We pray for his faith journey. We pray for his peace and his strength. And we pray for his healing. Amen. Are there other prayers that you have that you would like to share with the community? And we will pray for those. Yes. So June Nye um, is in hospice in Arizona, and we pray for June Nye and her family. We pray that God fill June Nye with peace and with strength and with comfort. Okay. Um, I'm going to say a short prayer for all the prayers on your heart right now that you did not speak. And then we will do communion. God, we come to you with hearts that are breaking and hearts that are overflowing with joy. With every emotion in this sanctuary, and we aren't going to say it because some of us are introverts or some of us, or some of us just don't want people to know. And God, we are navigating so much. Some of us on YouTube are home navigating diagnoses that we did not want, that we did not see coming. And we are asking for your strength and your peace. Some of us are in this sanctuary, and we know we have doctor's appointments coming up, or doctor's appointments we just had. And we feel, we feel a little anxiety. And we're asking for you to hold our anxiety Hold our fear, hold our uncertainty, hold all that we don't know. And you promise to be with us in every moment, at every juncture, with your love and your support. Guide each of us, God, in what has been spoken and what is not spoken. And give us the guidance and the vision and the wisdom as we seek to feel your love. Amen. If you'll open up the communion liturgy, which is in your bulletin, and I'll open it up. If you do not have communion and you would like communion, Larry has a tray of communion to bring your way. So just raise your hand if you want communion elements and you don't have them. When the women got to the tomb on that Easter morning, they were met by angels who told them, He is not here, but remember what he told you. I can't help but wonder, there in that garden, as the sun rose over the trees, if they remembered it all. I wonder Jesus telling 5,000 people to sit together in the grass, passing out baskets of fish and bread. I wonder if they remembered how he stopped in the middle of the crowd to ask, who touched my robe? I wonder if they remembered how he ate with Zacchaeus or scooped up the children into his, onto his knee. I wonder if they remembered him teaching in the temple, telling people, love your neighbor as yourself. I wonder if they remembered how the wind stopped with the sound of his voice. I wonder if they remembered how he washed their feet and said, this is my body broken for you. I wonder if they remembered it all. Friends, just like the women in we need those same reminders. The suffering of the world can erode the muscle memory of grace and welcome that we hold. Don't let it. Come to the table and remember. Remember how Jesus fed everyone. Remember how none were turned away. Remember how he said, do this in remembrance of me. Come and remember. There is room for you here. God of today and God of tomorrow. God of our faith and God of our doubt. Not stay away. So beating hearts and wide eyes, we have arrived in this sanctuary, bringing with us questions and hopes, joys and concerns. Here's
on, we start with our hopes. We thank you for the gifts of this world that instill buoyancy in us. Thank you for the curiosity of children, for the sound of your people singing in unison, crowded tables and neighborly kindness. Like Peter, we have countless reasons to hold on to hope. Highest among them is the joy and promise of this day. Holy bread. Before the joy is of this day, we found ourselves at the foot of the cross. So for the things that arose, doubt and fear, for your comforting hand. Wrap your arms around all who are still locked up in the upper room. Wrap your arms around all who cannot after their longest night. Wrap your arms around all who look for reasons to hope but cannot find crumbs amidst, amidst the reasons to grieve. And like Peter, use us to care for those in need, to tell your story, and to build a better world. We remember and we believe. So with awe-struck, wildly hearts, toward us, with garden and eyes on the cross, we pray to you, saying the word Father, Come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive our trespass against us and lead us not from evil for thy and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And Jesus took the bread Take the bread that you have been given. Jesus took the bread and he gave it to you. He broke the bread. His disciples eat. This is my body, broken for you. As often as you receive it, remember me. He gave thanks to you. And he said, This, all of you, this is my blood of out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the blood. Hmm. Say a short prayer for so generously and abundantly giving to us and feeding us. You fill us tangibly with your love and your strength, your hope and your presence. Imagine feeling in as they seek to pass your peace with others. Amen. The peace of Christ be with each of you. To pass the peace ourselves. The peace be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. We are grateful for all of the ways that you are. You are the church by day. You are the church by putting gas in your truck and driving to Hamilton to pick up the food. You are the trucks as you you are the church as food tomorrow. You are the church as you had have made dozens of pounds 
dozens of cakes and cookies for bereaved families in recent months. You are the church as you come together and pray at the spiritual retreat a few weeks ago. And we financially contribute to this church and to its community so that we may gather in song and gather in prayer and gather the ushers will come forward and collect our offering at this time. Things flow, praise him all creatures here below, praise him above the heavenly host, praise Father, the ghost, amen. God of abundance, so many fish you give upon grace as we give back to you. May you bless all these gifts so others may experience grace upon you. You're invited to closing him a below him. Lord of the Dance, 61, verses 1, 3, and 5.
And now we are invited to take all of Peter's stories with Jesus, to hear Jesus asking us to follow him, not once, but many ways. We are invited to jump out of boats. We're invited to wear our hearts on our sleeve. We are invited that when we feel fear, that Jesus will say, fear not. We are invited to be good shepherds now and to root ourselves in a love that is uncomfortable. It is a God love, the type of love that God wants to offer us, unconditional and abundant. May that love fill all of you as you walk on new paths on this new week. Amen.